you know, the proof of progress in your own walk with God is not going to be that you find always more pleasurable experiences or that you feel more comfortable. And I need to say this because sometimes when you're growing the most, you feel it the least. In fact, when you really start growing in faith, you become less certain about things that you used to assume. And it doesn't feel like your faith is getting stronger any more than it feels like your body's getting stronger when you're lifting weights. It doesn't feel like your faith is getting stronger as you, as you wade into the mystery that is an eternal God who was not conceived by time and who cannot be bound by time or understood by logic. In fact, the more you plunge into the mystery of God, the more you're going to have to rely on a dimension that your eyes can't see and that your mind can't prove. The proof of progress is resistance. The, the proof of progress… I mean, if, if you don't want to lose any weight, the devil won't tempt you with, with any healthy food. Has the devil ever tempted you with broccoli? Has the devil ever tempted you with kale? It's only when I'm headed in the direction of destiny. Proof of progress. So the, the gatekeepers didn't like it. They didn't, they didn't like it. And there's, there's a, a relevance to the, to the 10th chapter of John's Gospel where Jesus said something. You know, he said, I am the light of the world. Remember that? Do you really, or are you just saying you remember it? These seven things that he said that he was. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. One that I thought was kind of out of place was, I am the gate. You don't hear it as much, but he, he said that. He said, I am the gate. And I guess the reason it's not a very commonly known identification of Jesus is it's not a very emotionally appealing picture, right? I'm the gate. <laughs> I mean, the shepherd, that's like emotional, right? It's like, it's like combing the stuff out of my wool and like tending to my wounds and it's fighting off the wolves. And see, I, like, I like the good shepherd thing, but the gate, what he was intending to say, and I think we always need to remember this as the church is, that there are many religious gatekeepers who will try to establish by human rhetoric and human measurements who can and can't be a part of the kingdom of God. But I need you to know that no matter what the Pharisees or the Sadducees would say about who can get in and who can get out, that I am the gate. That, that when they try to put a, you must be this tall to ride sign in front of you. Because some of you in here don't even want to be here tonight, and you really want to be here, but you don't want to be here because you don't feel like you belong here. And I promise you that if I, if I took, if I took, if I took an hour of this sermon, I could mention things in this room that would shock you that people are going through. And then if I went long enough down the list, I would hit the thing that tries to keep you from ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't want to make a list because for some it would be something having to do with your, your self-image, and some it would have something to do with an addictive pattern, and some it would have something to do with a destructive behavior, and some of it would have to do with things that happened in the past. Some of it would have to do with things that are going on right now, and some of it would have to do with impulses that you can't control. Some of it would have to do with levels of competency, and everybody's smarter than you, and you always wonder, how does everybody else know all this stuff, and I don't know anything, and you just smile real good, and you just go in the bathroom and Google it while everybody else is talking about it, come back and talk about the conversation. But there's there's always going to be something into which Jesus must have to announce, I am the gate. Watch this. I decide who gets in. Watch this. I chose Peter to preach on the day of Pentecost after he denied me three times. So don't you let any person or experience or deficiency or incompetency try to keep you 
from administering the grace and the gift that I've placed on your life. I am the gate. Come on, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. That he didn't choose me for what I could do for him. He appointed me to bear fruit in his name, and he knows exactly what he put inside of me. I'm preaching to somebody because he's the gate. And yet the greatest growth in our life is often in the invisible places. And Peter, Peter is like, he's doing all the stuff that the angel is telling him to do. And yet he doesn't even really know that it's God. <laughs> Most of the times in my life, I didn't know God was using me until way after the fact. Now, the, 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 the thing that most people battle with at a certain stage in their ministry or in their parenting or just as you go about trying to do the things that God has given you to do is that you, you will battle at times feelings of insignificance even though you carry a great weight of responsibility. And here's what I noticed in the text that I think is a, a product of the group, group that I'm meeting with tonight is that when Herod killed James. He killed him in a very specific way. The scripture says he, he killed him with the sword, which means he beheaded him. And he didn't just behead anybody. He beheaded James, and then he locked up Peter. Why? Because when the enemy comes, he always comes for the head. Now, in this room are leaders and, and people who are heading up ministries within our church. And I don't know if they told you this in your leader orientation, but the moment you identify yourself to say, I'm going to lead people, you open yourself to new levels of conflict because to him who much is given, much is required. One scripture says, don't let many of you presume to be teachers. Because you get a stricter judgment. That means when you claim to be a leader, it takes the pressure to another level. So Herod's not throwing Herod's not throwing anybody in jail that doesn't represent a threat. He's coming for the head. The devil doesn't mess with people who aren't busy. He doesn't mess with people who aren't productive. He doesn't have to. And 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 so Peter is he's going through the motions, but he thinks he's he thinks he's seeing a vision. And look at this in verse 10. They passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. I guess that's what drew my attention to this text was the iron gate leading to the city. Gatekeepers came to the iron gate leading to the city. Now you're not going to believe what happened next because Peter didn't even believe it at first. When they got to the gate, it opened for them by itself, and they went through it. There are at least three different ways I could preach that text. The first one is that the gate was motion activated. It means that God might open the gate, but you've got to go through it. Come on. Touch somebody and say, you've got to go through it. I don't even know what it is, but you've got to go through it. Because if you don't go through it, you won't have a testimony. If you don't go through it, you won't have a ministry. If you don't go through it, you won't be able to declare, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, my enemies would have swallowed me up. But look at me standing by the grace of God. Come on, how many went through hell, but I came out on fire? Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.